It's like candy. I can feel it when you walk that shine. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Ashley. What's up, what's up? So I know y'all haven't seen me in a while. I don't judge me. Shout to my head and my heart. Mm -hmm. I am going to do the second recap to Love is Blind. So we have got through them um, going and living together. We got through the weddings and decisions. So I'm going to talk about it all, huh? I'm going to talk about it. I got me some wine. Grab you a little drinky drink. And let's get to talking, okay? I'm just going to say, like, I still... Am not that much of a fan of this season like I just feel like it was very lackluster compared to the first season I feel like the people who got on this season of the show were there to become like to get some sort of like clout from it I, I'm just not a fan of this season I just feel like it's not getting what it's supposed to have gay mm. I'm just gonna start it off with Danielle and Nick like <sighs> Danielle and Nick are literally Danielle I should say is literally the epitome of self-sabotage if you looked up self-sabotage in the dictionary her picture should be right next to it because the stuff that she does and the stuff that she says to this man Danielle what Nick <clears throat> has been taking everything in stride and I feel like because he doesn't really know her that well He's been trying to keep everything, like, neutral. But homegirl is coming out the gate. Like, I'm insecure. I'm I'm not prepared. I'm... <sighs> Honey, you should have went to therapy. You should not have been looking for a love, in a, a love interest because what? Every other conversation is about her being insecure. Every conversation with them is an argument or a disagreement of some sort. It's never like just, we're just talking and we're able to connect. It's never like that. It's always like tense. And, you know, I don't like, and I feel like this is how their relationship is going to go. I don't like when I feel in a relationship like I have to walk on eggshells because I don't know what's going to trigger you or I don't know you know what's gonna set you off that this day and I feel like Nick is like literally tiptoeing on eggshells so when she blows up he's immediately like I'm sorry you know I didn't I'm not trying to say this or I'm not trying to do that and it's always about her like literally always about her him coddling her feelings and making her feel um better and always him apologizing to her like she It's a lot. This is something, me personally, I would have been like, Danielle, I cannot do this. You need to go and get you some help, babe. Go get you some help because I can't deal with this. This is too much. This is almost like emotional abuse at this point. And I know when they went to go and visit the parents, the mama said that she was, you know, um, self-sabotaging and she had a man. <sighs> That's cute and all, but no, cause no. Who who wants to deal with this bullshit if they don't have to deal with the bullshit? Like, no, no. And she also brought up in an argument or they were at dinner, they were at dinner and she was just like, you know, I'm happy for the, whatever the hell, I can't remember exactly what she said, but she basically was like, if we were outside of the experiment, I don't think that we would have been able to last these two weeks. We probably would have stopped, broke up or broken up because of, you know, we aren't able to agree on certain things, whatever. And he was just looking like, you don't think we would have been together? Like, golly, you would have just been like, bye. And why would you say this to that man? Also, another thing, a comment that she made when they um, were doing like the house tours, and she basically was like, oh, I know how to piss you off. You know, when he was saying that he was like real clean. Why would you try to make him mad? on Self-sabotage, hun. It's all. 
it's giving self-sabotage. Um, now, one thing I will say, and, you know, <laughs> y'all can come for me in the comments. I don't really care. One thing I will say is I feel like Danielle may be a beard because Nick do some, he 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 does some, some things that I'm just like, Nick. Hey, so <laughs> well, we get to the it's gonna be some spoilers in this y'all be clear this video contains spoilers spoiler alert spoiler alert both Nick and Danielle say yes could not have been me why why would I do that I'm not going to put myself through that with her. A constant, a constant circle of, you know, her being, you no, know, basically emotionally abusive because that's what she's doing. People who self-sabotage play on your mind and make you feel guilty and like in a constant state of I'm going to have to apologize. I'm going to, I'm trying to make this person feel better. You don't never get what you need because you constantly worried about what they need and no. I don't have time for that. I don't see them uh, still being together right now to this day. Now, the reunion comes on on March 4th. We'll see if they stay together. I don't believe that they still are, but we'll see. Uh, Natalie and Shane. Now, I never, I have never liked Natalie and Shane. Um, their relationship seems like bullshit. <laughs> Natalie, separately, outside of Shane, I don't really care for Shane. He's annoying. I'm, he's like a bro. Hey, bro. Like, I don't like him. It's something about him. I did read some tea about Shane. Um... So from what I read about oh Shane, you know he be you know what I'm talking about mm, 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 mm. <laughs> on that candy. It's like candy. I can feel it when you walk that Shane. There is a cookout that's going on. Shayna is there. Shayna <laughs> essentially is there like. I'm finna get my men. I'm finna get my men. Like, she dirty macking, just like Jared was doing. Um, and is basically telling Shane that he feel like, or she feels like, that their relationship is bullshit, which I feel that too, but Shayna, you being petty. All up in Natalie's face, like, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Why are you doing that? You mad because he didn't choose you, okay? He didn't choose you, babe. You the one said yes to old Kyle and you knew that Kyle don't have, y'all do not even have the same moral background. So I don't even know why you did that. Why you did that? Y'all cannot stand this season. It's horrible. Um, Jessie Wu brought up a good point where she basically was saying that um, there was a cookout. This cookout was for all of the contestants, even the people who did not get a match and none of the black contestants were there. Not a one outside of Jared and Ayana. Netflix. Like, what's going on? And furthermore, why didn't any of these other black people get any screen time? I'm just, <sighs> I really thought like this, this was legit false advertisement. It's, it's giving when Bring It On filmed those extra scenes of the Clovers to make us think that the Clovers was in the movie more than they was in the movie. And then we watched the movies and the Clovers was like in there for like a snippet. Or when they lied to us and told us Chris Brown was going to be in Stump the Yard and he died in the first 10 minutes. They also lied to us and told us Usher was going to be in She's All That and this nigga was... <laughs> I'm gonna move on. But um, Natalie reveals like the day of the wedding that they have been arguing and he was saying very um, disrespectful stuff to her. So she says no. 
And Shane is like, bitch, what? And I'm like, Shane, really? Did you really think that she was going to say yes? I didn't see them working out in the end anyway, so good for you, girl. We got Mallory and Sal. Now, I can't stand Mallory and Sal. They're another relationship that I feel like is just like, okay. Um, Sal, the crooner, feel that in the pods, Mallory felt like Sal was a more attractive Hispanic man. Um, and when she actually saw him, I don't think that she was as attracted as she tried to make herself seem. And I know that sounds bad, but I really do feel that way. Um, and I, I definitely think that she was not that into him. And I think that he knew that in the end, because all of their relationships have been or all of their uh, communication and everything that we have seen, it's always like, oh, he's so cute. Like, oh, yeah, e oh, ooh. Like, it's just not, it, it's to me very like surface. And, you know, these men, I don't know about y'all, but these, I'm like, why are they letting people on the show who don't have their shit together? Because Married at First Sight, one thing that they make sure, those people are, like, established financially. They have jobs. They actually have some shit. You know, I'm coming in. I'm coming in hot. I already have something to bring if we were to stay married. You have these people who don't have nothing. Sal is, is like... Anyway, I think that Sal knew that Mallory was not that into him. And so on the wedding day, Sal says no. Okay, so we have Deep and Shake. Now, let me tell you how much these last two couples are the couples that I was really more invested in. That's why I did not have that much to say about the other two, but let's get into it. So Shake is an asshole. Shake is also... Um, he has a lot of self-hate and I can definitely tell that, you know, from the moment they stepped out of the pods, Shake was acting like, oh my God, oh my God. We see him squeeze this girl ass. Okay. And first of all, Deep D is not no slouch. Deep D is cute. She is cute. I don't even know what the fuck the problem is. Honestly, to be completely honest, I don't know what it is. So, <clears throat> I do, and I'm going to tell y'all in just a second. Constantly, what keeps coming up is he doesn't feel sexually attracted to his wife or to his to the match, to Deep. Now... Previously, he was stating that he only had dated white, blonde women after he moved to America. And, you know, it's all kind of making sense. And I feel like him is the same way with Ayana, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. With Jared, I mean. <laughs> I think that Shake has some self-hate that's going on. Because there's, I just, I don't understand what is it about Deep Deep that he just does not like. And I really think that it's because she has the same features as him. And I really, I just don't understand that. I don't understand it at all. Like, they meet each other's parents. Um, um, Deep's parents are sweet as pie. And then it's being like a completely different type of person. Then he goes to her parents or his parents. His parents love her. Of course they do. She's an Indian girl. She's pretty. She has her head on straight. She got her own shit. Of course they like her. He tells his mom, um, you know, I don't feel this attraction, this sexual attraction to her. And the mom is like, yeah, that's bullshit. I really feel like Shake is an asshole and he just has some self-hate going on and he's really taking it out on deep. 
because deep there's nothing wrong with her she looks just like you she has the same features that you have hun i it will never men who do not date their own like people who look like them it's always gonna be like a why is that um but men who don't date their own types of people Now, let me tell you about my girl, Deep. Deep played the long game, babe. Deep was playing that long game, honey. And the long game is making my... Um, <laughs> oh, child, I was finna, it was finna come up out of me. That's that wine. Um, playing the long game is making somebody think <laughs> that you're not as smart as you are. And she did that. Up until the day of, we think that Deep has no clue no clue what's going on with shake you know we think that she's like oh my gosh we're so in love that's how it looks that's how it is edited to look to us child deep got to that altar and said no i deserve someone who um is gonna make me feel from beginning to end like they fuck with me and that's just that on that and shake was trying to act like that and hurt his feelings but it did it did. The look of surprise on his face. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> I don't think that he expected her to say no to him. I think he felt like she was so in love with him because he feeding her all of this bullshit this whole time. And I think that he thought that she was going to be like, mm, yeah, I still want to say yes. And I, I, I feel it in my soul that he wanted to say no to her. I don't know if that's true, but Miss Deep said, baby, I deserve better. And that's on period. And yes, you do, ma'am. You do because you're beautiful and you the shit. Ayana and Jared. <sighs> Jared is what I call a fuckboy with nice guy tendencies. So he's a fuckboy. He is. But he just is a fuckboy that's a nice guy those exist those are the ones that get you real confused in the head and make you feel like Ugh. but he's so nice to me but he's really not he's really a fuck boy like everybody else he's just nice on top of it um so i definitely think that that's jerry a lot of the stuff that he was doing i also okay let me just go back in the pods we see jared with mallory Jared brings her tacos. He's like, um, I bought you tacos because I feel, you know, you said that was one of your favorite foods. And mm -hmm. he speaks to Ayana and he is like, yeah, I almost got shot. Um, I mean, I got stabbed and I almost died. And is there anything that you had to suffer for and uh all that kind of stuff right so i feel like they definitely trauma bonded him and ayana and he was really i think from the pods that jared could possibly tell that um mallory may have been like either white or latina and I definitely think he thought that Mallory or uh, Ayana was like a dark skinned black woman. Don't come for me. I feel that in my soul because he kept saying things like to Ayana that was like, I, you don't look anything like your voice. Um, you don't look, you look way different than I expected you to look. You don't seem like your voice. Your voice doesn't match your face. It was stuff like that. And I'm just like, Jared. And then when he meets up with Mallory and is talking to her from that disrespectful ass time that he was talking to her, he basically is telling her, I, um, you had that... I, I I figured out in my head, I knew in my head that you had curly brown hair. How do you know that, Jared? I, I, I don't know. It's something in me. It's something in me 
another thing that irritates me about Jared, Jesse Wu pointed this out as well. He never, he can never say what it is that he likes about Ayana outside of the fact that she's a strong woman, that she's resilient. What the fuck does that even mean? What does that mean? I never want, this is, this is my thing, like going into, I don't want people to describe me as strong or resilient. And I also don't want them to describe me by service acts. I want people to be able to look at me and think about me and my totality and be able to see, I love her because she's smart. She always has facts like random facts and I love that. I love the fact that she is sweet. I love her music taste. I like the fact that she's caring, she's honest, she's beautiful. She loves children, she's family oriented. I love the fact that if you're gonna call me strong, I love the fact that the world dealt her a bad card and she was able to flip it and make it something beautiful. She was able to rise through the ashes and still be this person here today. She didn't let that define her. She didn't let that stop her. She kept going. She's an amazing person. None of that is what he was able to say. He didn't say nothing like that. She's strong and she's resilient. Her parents was looking at him like, okay. Yeah. Like, what else? What else, Jared? What? Then, I don't know. He's giving me, I don't have a job. I don't know. He just gives, I don't have a job. When he described all this, the shit that he do in the pods, I'm like, that sounds like you ain't got no job, baby. You don't clock in. You ain't got no nine to five. Okay, so are you an entrepreneur? What do you do? What do you do? Because he never really said full out what he did. Oh, I cut hair and I sell Jordans and I, uh, I'm a club promoter and then I'm a... Uh, an underwater basket weaver and then I uh I hoop sometimes during the weekends and then I'm a bouncer um sometimes and then mm, okay also Jared is staying out hella late I, I feel like all of, that's why I said I don't feel like none of these people that were on this show this season, more specifically some of the guys, I feel like they were on there just to get some clout from it because you just moved in with this woman. You have just started a cultivated a relationship and you know that you just proposed. So y'all are about to get married. Why are you staying out? When she said, she asked him like, I don't like the fact that you stay out so late. I don't even care about you staying out or you going out. It's the fact that, you know, you stay out so late. If you could just be home by like three. I said three. If she's saying she want him to be home by three, how late are you staying out? And what do you do? Like, I don't know nobody who can go out on a Tuesday because he said he went out for Taco Tuesday. I don't know nobody who could go out on a Tuesday and be out until 6 o'clock in the morning. A Tuesday, I either have to clock in tomorrow morning or I still have um, things to do in my own personal like job. If I'm an entrepreneur, whatever, I still need to be home by a decent hour even if I am going to go out. 3 in the morning, why would you want to be out until 3 in the morning away from your partner? 3 in the morning? three in the morning that is late and then he he himself is like that's late and you was out until later than that she's saying to be back by three <sighs> i really feel like even in the mist when she was speaking to him about her going out or him going out um her tone was just like i'm scared and he was basically saying, like, give me an opportunity to fix everything that's been going on. But it's the fact that even after that, she was still saying, like, I need to see action. Jared, it don't take long to fix some shit. It don't take long to be like, hey, y'all, I'm not hanging out with y'all this weekend. I'm going to be with my lady. It does not take long to do that. It doesn't. I really did not want her to say yes to him. I just felt like she deserved so much better, you know, and I really do think that had Mallory said, yes, that's who he would have 
proposed to essentially Ayana and to me when he saw Ayana and saw that she was a fair-skinned black woman it threw him for a loop because it, it did seem that way to me I don't know it's just it may it could be just me but I definitely feel like he mm -hmm, <laughs> had a preference and the preference was Mallory and not Ayana. That's why he kept saying in his head, like, your voice doesn't match you. What do you mean? Like, what do you mean? What did you expect me to look like? Like, keep it a bug. What did you expect me to look like? Anyway. Let's say yes. He stood in front of each other. They are in this church saying their vows to each other. All of this, this man kept saying is you, what you, it's making me mad. All he kept saying was how she was of service to him. Basically, how you, how supportive you are. I like how supportive you are. What does that mean, Jared? What does that even mean? Like, what else about her? You can't even say in your wedding vows how you truly feel about this woman. Like, you can't even say that you love her just because of who she is. It don't even have to be a reason. I just love her because I love her. We have a connection, you know, and if she never changes from who she is right now today, I would still love her. I love her spirit. I love her laugh. I love everything about her. She's supportive. So we're going to see if they still marry. I hope uh, Love is Blind Season 3 is better than this because this was a very disappointing season. I don't get the feels like I felt for Lauren and Cameron for any of these couples. I really wanted Lauren and Cameron to work and I knew they were going to even by how in love they were just from you know in, from in the pods but these couples just i just feel like they were not there like for real for real with the exception of a couple to really really truly find love i think you know the reason why the show was so successful is because of lauren and cameron everybody who references love and blind love is blind references lauren and cameron <laughs> and the fact that they didn't have them involved in either any of the season this year is like they're the reason why the show is successful nobody gave a shit about them other couples i'm sorry but nobody gives a shit no nobody cares no one cares anyway we're gonna see if these couples are together we gonna see it's coming out friday i'm not that enthused i really don't care this season was a big letdown. I don't, I did like Ayana and Jared and I was really hoping that he picked her first, but then he turned around and, and said all that shit to Mallory first and it just was a big letdown. And from there, I just, I couldn't get past it because I was just like, wow. And every single time he was showing us that Mallory really was his choice and his pick, you know, with everything that he was doing, it's just, we could tell that that was his pick. We could just tell with everything that he was doing, all the stuff that he was saying, I pictured you with curly brown hair. I, I knew that. How? How? It's the fact that he could picture her with long brown hair or whatever. And Ayana, you don't look like your voice. I just, I, I'm, I can't wrap my mind around your voice. It doesn't match you. Jared, shut the fuck up. Uh, I'm I'm done with this. It's getting on my nerves. <sighs> Leave y'all comments down below because I, I need to talk about this with somebody. My sister do not watch Love is Blind. And this is just... Mm. I hope they all said bye. And we all just going to be single. And we'll try it again later. <laughs> but anyway, and that's all for this video, y'all. Um... I have some some cute little things coming. Stay tuned. Keep it locked. Keep it locked. Keep it locked. Y'all never want us to surprise you to say that. Keep it locked, y'all. <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.